Have you ever thought about using a metronome, but you're not really sure where to get started? If so, then this video is for you. Hi, my name is Josh of Piano Frenzy, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the metronome the right way if you're just getting started with the piano. By the way, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. So one of the biggest debates with the metronome, especially with piano playing, is should you use it or should you not use it? And look, I get it, I've heard all the arguments. You have some pianists that are on one side that say never use it, and then you have pianists on the other side that say, oh, you have to use it every single time. But what's the right answer? Well, the answer honestly is, it depends on you and your situation. So before deciding to use the metronome, there are three things you really need to consider. So the first thing to consider is, can the metronome improve my rhythm and my stability at the piano? So what I mean by that is, you know, can it keep you stable? Can it keep you from going off track? Can it stop you from rushing? Those are all things you really need to think about before you start using the metronome. The next thing to consider is, can I maintain my musicality while using the metronome? I know some of the biggest concerns is if you're using the metronome, does it kind of dull out your playing and take away some of the dynamics and the interest in your playing? Well, that depends on how you use it and the frequency in which you're using it. And the last thing to consider is, does the metronome improve my technique at the piano? How are we using it to figure out what angles to take with our hands, what fingering to use, what process we need to do, and are we using it at a slow enough tempo to make sure that we can really address those issues when they come up? So if you've considered those three things and you decide the metronome is for you, then we can move on in a video. Here are a couple tips we're gonna use to make sure we practice using it the right way. So in this first example, I'll show you how we can use the metronome to improve stability in our rhythm and work on syncopation. Okay, so we're just getting started with the metronome. And so what I like to have students do is just get used to what the rhythm feels like, but not having to worry about specific notes and patterns and stuff in music. So we'll just choose any key. Let's say it's C, for example, right? Middle C. And I'll put my metronome on around 70 beats per minute. And by doing this, we're just gonna make sure we hit with each downbeat here. So we'll turn our metronome on. Two, ready, and just play C's. Good, so after that point, what we're gonna do is double our rhythm in the right hand. So we're gonna turn now from quarter notes to eighth notes. That way we're gonna get two notes played per metronome beat that you hear. So here's how that goes. Two, ready, go. So as you can see, what we're doing is making sure that we can stay stable because we have to fit between the beat as well, not just on it, but between it. Now we're gonna mix things up a little bit. We're gonna add four times the notes that we did in the beginning. So instead of one note or two notes, we're gonna play four notes per beat. So you're gonna hear ta 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 ta. One, two, ready, go. Now where this exercise works really well is we do it all in succession. So we'll start with the quarters, then we'll immediately go to the eighth notes and then to the 16th notes that we did. So here's how it goes. Two, ready, go. Eighths. Sixteenths. Now, if you just don't wanna do this exercise with one hand, what you can do is a little bit of an activity I like to teach my students, which is doing chords in the left hand. The left hand will only play quarter notes, so it'll be right with the metronome every time. The right hand will, do, of course, do the single notes that we did, right, quarters, eighths, and then sixteenths. The difference is we're gonna gradually move up the scale. So we'll start on C, for example. Here's how it can go. Ready, go. So as you can see, this is just a very base level, but you can always make it more complicated. For example, you can have your metronome, especially if it's a digital one, uh, tap in triplets, or you might wanna do it in 16th notes in different rhythms, or every other beat. That's really up to you what you're trying to achieve in whatever piece of music you're working on. Hey, before we go on with the video, I want to let you know about a really awesome opportunity to take one-on-one -on -one piano lessons with me. That's right, I've decided to open up one-on-one -on -one piano lessons online with yours truly, just for my YouTube subscribers. And signing up is easy. All you have to do is go to the link at the bottom of the screen or check the video description. 
click the link, sign up, and then you can start taking lessons with me right now. And look, I love teaching online lessons. With over 24 years of experience and thousands of lessons taught, I'm sure I can help you out with any piano issue you're having. So whether you want to learn classical music or pop or rock, whatever it is you want to do, we can do it together. It's going to be an awesome experience. So if you're interested and you want to take some online lessons with me, then make sure you check out the link in the video description or at the bottom of the screen so we can get started right now. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. So in this next example, I'll show you how to use the metronome in small batches to make sure that you're achieving what you want without having to go for the whole piece of music. Because the problem is if you have to go for the whole piece of music, yes, it can dull out your playing and take all the musicality out of it. I'll also show you how to add dynamics in while still using the metronome. So let's go over that next. So for this next example, we're gonna use the Sonatina in C major, the Clementi, because it's really popular. So here's how this one goes. Now, of course, that's a lot of notes. In order to keep them even, let's say I was having some issues, and let's say I played it incorrectly like this. So here's how I can go about it. Let's say I do it in small chunks, right? So I have issues in a couple places. I have it here. I played it like this. So that's the first place I'd adjust. I just turn the measure on and just go. Then I would add both hands together and see if it stays the same. Let's say the next place that I went wrong was the scale, right? Let's say I played it incorrectly like this. Make sure the right hand can do it stable, right? So. And then you'd add the left hand and so forth and go on. What you do want to try to avoid doing is doing that entire section with the metronome because it doesn't really address what the issue is. So for example, if I did this, that's really only going to work if I've worked out all the other parts in small pockets. So my advice to you is to do it in little small two to four measure chunks, figure out where the issues are happening, even go smaller, even one measure at a time can really help you figure out what's going wrong. So where things can get tricky with the metronome is if you're playing a more advanced piece and you have a lot of rubato, retardando, suspended chords, and you need to just take time and kind of milk certain sections. The goal of this, or the trick really, is you just have to kind of play through it, and then when you find a good spot, get back onto the beat or gradually get back into it. Because that's how it'll go in real time. For example, if I'm doing this Scriabin piece, Notice everything wasn't just like metronomic and like straight and going for it. So let's start practice it with the metronome. You can do the same thing. So notice I wasn't always with it, but I know how to get back to it at any point. Again, certain pieces just don't work for metronome as well. You have to keep that in mind. But if you had to use it and something was terribly going wrong, it's possible to just kind of play through it. Remember, the metronome's always gonna keep going. You can get back on whenever you want. You don't have to feel like you're stuck with it. You don't have to feel like you can't get off of it. You can always get back on at any point. Notice, I was off the metronome for quite a bit in that passage, but I got back on. And that's another point I wanted to make, and just to reiterate, that you don't want the metronome to always be going. It's not intended for that, right? Because pieces have to be in performance mode as much as possible, even in practice. And so what you want to do is just put it on for the certain sections. Let's say I was having issues here in the beginning. Okay, I have the metronome for that, right? So then we have. And then. I feel solid now, I take the metronome off. I free it up a little bit now. Now I'm free to play the piece I've worked on what was kind of causing everything to be super uneven. So as you see, although the metronome is still clicking, you can go past the beat, you can still add your dynamics in, and you can still work on all the other little fine techniques that it does, as long as you don't have it constantly clicking and never turn it off. So in this last example, I want to show you how we can use the metronome to get rid of bad technique. And it's possible if we start at a slow enough tempo and gradually speed up as we identify what's causing our issues and learn how to fix it. So here's how we're going to do that. Piggybacking off the sonatina we were doing, this kind of leads me to my next point is, how can we fix technique? Because a lot of times metronome can help you with that. So if the scale is going wrong, for example, if I'm doing, I 
can already see that some of my technique issues is that my hands are playing very flat, right? And I'm also doing lots of extra rotation that's not really needed. What a metronome can help me figure out is as I go slow, I'll notice as I go slow that my angle starts to go off. But I wouldn't have known that if I didn't practice at a slow, stable tempo and say, okay, what's causing me to rush the scale? What's causing me to get off track, right? So a metronome can help with that. So what I do is actually slow it down even slower. I would go maybe to like 50 beats a minute. We'll try that. Really slow, right? And duh. Oh, I see the issue now, right? So I need to keep my hands high here. So. And then you work that slowly at a couple uh, times in a row until you get it there. What you can do now is then increase your click. So let's go to 55. We don't want to go more than five just to make sure that we're not jumping ahead too soon. Same part. Well, let's say the mistake is still there, right? Uh, I went flat again. Now I got to go back, right? comfortable there. I move up a couple more clicks. Eventually you get to 70. I want you to hear the difference just how much faster this is. Then again. So hopefully in this video you found that using the metronome can actually be very beneficial as long as you use it the right way and in the right amounts. Again there is no right or wrong answer on should you use it or should you not use it. It comes down to your personal taste what issues you're facing, and whatever you're trying to fix in your piano playing. And remember, the metronome goes beyond just rhythm and speed. It can address technique as well, and it can help you be even more musical if you use it the right way in moderation. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and let me know if it's helping you out.